Hey, what's up? Improvement Warrior Jason Yun back with you again. Welcome back to Improvement Warrior Fitness University. This is leptin part two, the leptin prescription reset. Okay, so we're gonna get right into this. All right, and Okay, so, all right, so leptin reset prescription, leptin part two, what to do to get back to being leptin sensitive. And this stuff that I'm going over is coming directly from Dr. Jack Cruz. Um, so you're welcome to follow him as well, uh, but he will quite simply in one word or in one phrase it blow your mind. He has me and I've basically been doing a four month biohack that has completely changed my life and um, what I think about health and how I think about food and uh, light and all the stuff that we do in relation to health. Okay, but uh, again, you gotta be ready for it and you gotta be open-minded, very, very open-minded. Um, but so let's get into this and let's talk about how we can get you back to leptin sensitive. Uh, if you are leptin resistant, again, don't skip part one. Don't skip any parts of this because certain things tie together. And if you jump in in part four and watch the other parts, you're going to have no idea of what's going on. So uh, don't skip. This is not. Uh, college or high school where you can just catch back up in a day or two. You have to know what's going on. This is your body. And if you don't know the reason you're doing it, then you're not going to continue doing it. So it's going to be much, that much easier to um, give in and say, Oh, I, I'll just have this, this cookie this one time. Um, when you know why you shouldn't have that cookie that time, then it's a lot easier to say no. So don't skip parts. All right, let's get into this. So the leptin prescription reset. Your hypothalamus is, is gonna to respond to food in a new way once you do this. Uh, it's gonna sensitize your leptin receptors to electrons. So that's one of the things that I learned is all energy is related to the amount of electrons that we can get into our mitochondria. So our mitochondria, some of you may or may not have heard of it, it is our powerhouse of our cell. It's basically what gives us that energy. So again, no energy, no life. Okay? Uh, all food gets turned into electrons. And some foods have more, so fat, protein, and some foods have less, carbohydrates. And sometimes carbohydrates will actually take electrons from you. Okay, um, so it just depends on things. Make sure you watch the other webinar, the 13 Pillars of Health. All right, so this is gonna force your hypo the hypothalamus to rely on circadian and ultradian rhythms. Okay, obesity is not laziness or gluttony. It's an inflammatory brain disease. When you do this, your organs are going to respond radically different. They're going to work and they're going to be healthy. I mentioned in the last webinar, part one, that we never see hippos or lions and tigers in for statin drugs or metformin, or we never go out into the wild and put them on there, okay? They don't have books on how to eat, okay? But us humans, we have outsmarted our environment because we have this thing on top of our head called a brain that allows us to do that, but we never, should have done that, and that's why the most of the population is sick and obese and overweight and has some disease. All right, uh, your mood, your thoughts, and your personality are going to change as well. You're um, going to be more tranquil, and you're going to have more ability to actually think for yourself and be open-minded and all that stuff. Uh, taste and smell will definitely change. Okay, so good foods, healthy foods, are going to taste good to you again. 
and some uh, treat foods and uh, carbohydrate cravings, they'll be gone. Um, some treat foods, when you go back to tasting them, they won't taste as good. And that's because we have reset your taste buds back to normal. Okay? You eat too much sugar, eat too much artificial sweeteners, high fructose corn syrup. Uh, it destroys the original taste buds, but we can bring those back. Okay. All right. Whoops. Where are we? Okay. All right. So are you leptin resistant? So this is part one of the reset. Uh, or if you're 25 pounds or more overweight, then pretty much you're leptin resistant. Okay. If you have a large appetite, okay, you are pretty much leptin resistant. Do you crave certain foods, especially carbohydrates, especially at night? You are leptin resistant. Okay. Uh, if you're fit, uh, fit and healthy, or supposedly fit and healthy, uh, because you could be fit and healthy and look like the cover of a, a magazine and you can look like Swiss cheese on the inside. Uh, so if you're unsure and you want to know the, I mentioned this in part one, but the blood tests to do that would be reverse T3, uh, also testing your leptin levels and salivary cortisol levels. Uh, also ferritin levels and C-reactive protein. All of these will be elevated if you are leptin resistant. Okay. And another good test is the HSC reactive protein. Uh, that's for general inflammation. The higher the number is, the longer this reset is going to take you. So typically it's recommended four to six weeks for the average person. However, it could take even longer than that. So don't put everything into believing it's gonna take just four to six weeks but it could take two months, three months, six months, a year, okay? So you're in this for the long haul to fix yourself. Okay, uh, also salivary cortisol levels, it's a key test to knowing where you are. Um, should be highest in the morning and lowest at night. I mentioned in part one leptin webinar that if you have chronic cortisol, elevation and chronic insulin elevation, then that just means some big disease is coming for you very soon if you don't do something about it. Okay. All right, it's part two. Follow a strict paleo ketogenic nutrition plan. Um, so as you know, I am big into the ketogenic, low carb, high fat type of nutrition plan. Notice it doesn't say diet anywhere. So usually with paleo, it's paleo diet. Usually with keto, it's keto diet. Throw the diet word away for the rest of your life. You are finding a nutrition plan, a nutrition lifestyle. Okay, uh, Paleo ketogenic is whole foods pretty much. Um, some supplements are allowed. Um, you just got to watch the ingredients with any food that you put in your mouth, you have to watch the ingredients because a lot of uh, companies, they will put stuff that just doesn't belong. So I was looking at tuna at uh, Aldi's today and pretty much all of them had uh, soybean oil and uh, there was some other, one other ingredient that is not good. So it's like, why? It's like you put tuna in water and seal it and it's good for two or three years uh, but yeah that's why always check the ingredients so it's going to be a high fat low carb and the protein will typically for the leptin reset the protein is going to be a little higher uh, than a typical ketogenic approach so it's going to be more paleo um, in that regard for the protein uh, the protein is going to be you're going to have more a lot more seafood as well, and I'll talk about it in future webinars, but the most important supplement, the most important nutrient to consume is DHA, okay? DHA, so that's an omega-3 fatty acid, so in, in omega-3 fatty acids, there's DHA, uh, EPA, ALA, okay? I 
think there's one more, but that's not important. Um, so what is important is just making sure that you're eating that and following that plan. Okay. Uh, I do have the 47 day keto challenge, so that can help set you on the right path as well. There's a 90 plus page ebook in there and recipe book and all that stuff. And then we've got a Facebook group for more support as well. And if you aren't following me on social media, please do so. I post a lot of information on there. Um, so Yun Training, Y-U-N Training is my uh, call sign or whatever you call it. So, all right, uh, so let's see, part two. So what, what you eat is just as important as eliminating foods causing the leptin receptors to stop functioning. So the leptin receptors that are gonna, or the food that's gonna stop it from functioning are gonna be your uh, standard American diet foods. So very high carbohydrates, the sugar, the wheat, the soy, all that needs to go. The PUFAs, polyunsaturated fatty acids, canola oil, soybean oil, uh, corn oil, right? Uh, there's some other ones that are escaping me right now, but those are the ones that are gonna cause the leptin receptors to malfunction. Okay, you wanna eat within 30 minutes of waking, okay? Very important. We are, again, we're resetting the circadian, circadian biology, resetting the circadian rhythm, okay? And this meal needs to have as little carbs as possible, so preferably less than 25 grams. The more obese, you are or the less or the lacking more lacking of energy you are the less carbs you eat okay so it can it can be less than five or less than ten uh, doesn't really matter okay and your average protein should be between 50 to 75 grams of protein okay so for some of you this is going to be a major major change especially if you're just eating an egg or two, or an egg white, which you should not be eating just egg whites ever. Yolk is where everything is, vitamins, nutrients, all that stuff. Um, some will have more protein, some will have less. You're gonna base this on the hunger for the rest of your day. Okay, so you should be able to go to dinner without being hungry. However, you do, when you are starting this, you do wanna eat three square meals a day. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So lunch might be your smallest meal if you are not that hungry, but we do want to have the lunch. Okay. And it should be following the paleo ketogenic approach. Okay. Uh, your best sources of protein in order are going to be wild seafood, pastured eggs, grass fed meats, uh, poultry, whey protein. Okay, and then the same for fat, okay? 50 to 75 grams or 10 to 25% above that, okay? Um, so it all depends. And so I could tell you, you can pull up what I had this morning. Hopefully, not really though, okay. And let's see, and then you wanna eat your last meal at least four hours before bed, okay? So that's gonna also help the circadian uh, rhythm and get that back, okay? So when you watch the, uh, the 13 Pillars webinar, you're gonna find out just how important your circadian rhythm is to everything, okay? All right. Okay, so yeah, I'm, not, I'm not following the uh, the leptin reset because I'm pretty leptin sensitive, but pretty much my, okay. Yeah, that's not a good example. Okay. Um, so yesterday I had 23 carbs, 90 grams of fat, 76 grams of protein. Okay. But it's going to be different for everybody. So I don't want to give out certain numbers. You're going to have to play around with the numbers. Uh, if you're getting hungry by lunchtime and you're eating 50 grams of protein, then 
bump it up to 60 grams and then go from there and just keep bumping it up until you can uh, get to lunch without being hungry. Uh, eventually you want to drop the three meals down to just two. Okay. All right. And absolutely 100% no snacking. Okay. No snacking. And that should be a general rule for basically the rest of your life. Okay. So that messes with the uh, digestion. So we need to bring the digestion back. So the body knows what to do. And it's not digesting food every two to three to four hours. Right, so number three, how is more important than what you eat? Okay, um, so be sure to watch the 11 pillars of health webinar again. It's now 13, and it most likely will stop at 13, but um, you never know. Always adding something, finding something. Um, circad circadian biology is the number one factor for your health. Okay. So again, watch that webinar. I'll go over what circadian biology is and all that. Again, never snack. Remaking this point, never snack. All right. Um, snacking destroys the timing and the circadian clocks that work in unison with the leptin receptors. Okay. Again, start with three meals a day. And as the hunger dissipates, drop down to two. You can't drop to two, not to two, or you can stay at three. Um, or, and you can also move into intermittent fasting or fasting protocols as your leptin resets. I do have a intermittent fasting and fasting webinar that you can watch as well once you're at that stage. Okay. And then you also want to watch the sunrise every morning, even if it's cloudy. If you miss it, you fail. Okay. That is the number one factor for circadian biology. It basically tells your uh, pituitary gland to turn on the hormone cascade hormone factory in your body. And if you miss it, you fail. So reset your morning. If you're at work, I'm sure there's people that go out for cigarette breaks. Just take a sun break. Okay. And at least four to five hours, after your last meal before sleep. So for at least four hours before bedtime, you wanna get that last meal in. Okay, and if possible, try to work out after 5 p.m. Okay, so again, this is the leptin reset. You're not gonna do this forever. We're just gonna do this until we reset the leptin receptors. So some people I know this is impossible to do because uh, certain situations sometimes people work at night and kids family time all that stuff but just try and do your best otherwise we can try and work on um, some alternates for you based on your situation and I'm not gonna get an alternates here because it's everybody's different everybody has different lives and all that stuff okay and then within one hour of sunset make your surroundings as dark as possible and wear Blue blocking glasses. So I've got them on. You'll see, I don't know if you can see me right now, but I've got them on and I pretty much wear them all day now. Um, I'll get into that when I get into the blue blocking or the, the blue light webinar, uh, which is coming very soon in Improvement Warrior University. Uh, I just use, uh, what is it? Uh, they're just orange. Uh, construction glasses uh, I forget the the brand but because I'm not gonna take them off but I forget the brand I will post it below I just get them on Amazon they're like eight or nine or ten bucks there are more expensive ones more elaborate ones there's ones you can wear out at night and I'll post links to all of those but you got to block that that blue light because that's gonna affect your circadian biology as well okay uh, six to eight weeks typically is the time frame. Uh, you're going to notice cravings and hunger will start to dissipate. Okay. 
the higher your homocysteine and C-reactive protein and hormonal variability is, then the longer this reset is going to take for you. So stay persistent and stay consistent. Okay. So just expect no specific time. Expect longer than six to eight weeks. If it happens sooner, hey, good. All right, but if you don't fix your leptin, then good luck with your weight loss, good luck with your disease uh, reversal, good luck with getting off the prescription drugs, good luck with pretty much everything. Okay. All right. So men, if you are in andropause, women, if you are in menopause, it is going to take longer, so just expect that. Okay, and if that is the case, andropause for men, menopause for women, uh, a lot of people in this situation will be better off using bioidentical hormone therapy in addition to the leptin reset. Uh, but it is not absolutely necessary that it would just help speed up the process. Okay, and if you, well, hold on, okay. So signs you are now leptin sensitive and need to move on to the leptin post prescription. Okay, which will be a future webinar. Okay. Okay. So men, you're gonna notice quick weight loss. Women, your mood is gonna change. You're gonna get calmer and more sleepy. Your sleep is going to improve. Clothes will fit differently, but your weight may or may not be moving anywhere. Okay, both sexes will, in uh, sweating, you'll notice a difference in your sweating patterns. So you'll be sweating more, which is a good thing because sweating is one of the ways we remove toxins. All right, you'll have better recovery from exercise and your energy will go up, okay? And then the hunger and cravings will typically start to dissipate. Okay, and so that's typically the end of that one. And the next one is the, part three is the hormone cascade. And uh, if you do, no, never mind. That's for another webinar, so my bad. Um, so that is it. That is the leptin prescription. I will uh, post some information down below. I will have a handout of the instructions and uh, try and put as much detailed information that I can put into that. Uh, probably a one page document. So hopefully that will help you as well. And hold on one second. Okay. All right, so um, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, again, share this out with anybody that you think should be watching it. And yeah, we'll go from there. Uh, if you're not part of the Improvement Warrior University, check it out. And uh, don't forget to follow me on social media, Young Training. And if you have questions about this, post it below. Text, call, email, ask me in class, however you want to. Uh, get the information but that's it thank you for watching have a great day stay strong stay positive be the improvement warrior